Hello and welcome to Ocean Inverts. Today we are going to talk about sea stars. Sea stars are in the phylum Echinodermata, and many species play an important role in maintaining ecosystem diversity. You know, sea stars are ecologically very important. One of our species is considered a keystone species, so uh, really can control some of the, the other taxa on the shoreline. And when it, when it was hit with wasting disease, this was in 2011, we kind of made a plan to study it, but then it then it, it came and went. So some of these disease outbreaks are really kind of like lightning strikes. They hit quickly and then they're over. That was Drew Harvell, a marine ecologist and invertebrate biologist from Cornell University who studies sea stars at Friday Harbor Laboratories off the coast of Washington State. She's talking about sea star wasting disease, which was first seen on the West Coast in 2011, but wasn't fully studied until a second outbreak occurred in 2013. In 2013, when again we saw another outbreak beginning, we really moved quickly to try to get the samples. So it was really some postings on um, Echino blog that alerted us to the death of sunflower stars in British Columbia. And that was in August of 2013 that we saw massive die-offs of hundreds of stars rapidly dying. And at the time, nobody knew what the cause was. Maybe it was a, a low oxygen event. Maybe it was a warm temperature event. Maybe it was a cold temperature event. Maybe it was ocean acidification. And so, but of course we were thinking disease because we had seen it before. As Drew mentioned, at first scientists weren't sure about exactly what was causing sea star wasting. Normally, scientists use Koch postulates to confirm the causative agent of an apparent disease. In order to determine if a causative agent is truly causing a disease, the causative agent must be present in all disease specimens, but absent from all healthy individuals. Next, the agent must be isolated in pure culture from a sick individual and then be able to reinfect a healthy individual. Finally, the agent must then be able to be re-isolated from the infected individual. Unfortunately, it was not possible to test potential agents of sea star wasting using Koch's postulates. Because there's no uh, cell lines for echinoderms, it was never possible to try to culture a pure, pure culture of the denzovirus or any of the other potential exact species kinds of viruses. So that remains very, very unknown. This was a very widespread event and again affecting over 20 species of sea stars. And so it seemed less likely that any one physical factor could be causative. Plus there were cases where waterborne transmission seemed to be happening, for example, in the, the Seattle Aquarium. Uh, again, that was sort of an indication there was something infectious in the waters. Our experiments tested and showed, provided very strong evidence for a virus, not necessarily any particular virus, but a viral sized fraction as, as uh, killing stars when they were injected with it. And so I think it's important to realize take some perspective on this in that many infectious diseases take years to really solve. The same kinds of problems we have with our COVID outbreak, uh, the Davalos, that sometimes there's asymptomatics, right? So there's hosts running around that are carrying the, the virus, but they're not sick. So you're like, oh, can't be that. <laughs> or there's ones where you get, you know, false positives. So. Uh, it's, it's a tough problem. As we talked about in the beginning of this video, sea stars are often important to the food web structure of their ecosystems. Some stars are even considered keystone species, which means that losing those stars would have drastic impacts on other species in the ecosystem. We asked Dr. Harvell what the impacts of sea star wasting disease look like not only for sea star populations, but for other species as well. The impacts are sometimes difficult to track. One of the ones that's been most clear is the near, um, or at least the local extinction of the sunflower star at quite a few sites, particularly in California. And that species was capable of controlling populations of sea urchins. And so uh, it's, it's devastation 
across a very wide geographic range has resulted in outbreaks of sea urchins, which are devastating kelp beds. Even now, in 2020, sea star wasting disease continues to impact some species. We asked Dr. Harvell why this outbreak has lasted so long and what other factors might be at play. The problem with this outbreak is it's a multi-host pathogen. So virus can reside in the more resistant host, and so they may be carriers for this. Of course, this is all against a backdrop of climate change and warming events, and so it, it is difficult to disentangle the effect of the removal of the stars from the warming of oceans. Dr. Harvell's book, Ocean Outbreak, talks about the accelerating rates of marine diseases and how anthropogenic forces such as pollution, shipping, and warming increase the spread and severity of marine diseases. We asked Dr. Harvell why she wrote the book and what main takeaways she hopes readers will get from it. A big reason to do it was um, to really think of a way forward. What could we be doing better in managing our ocean resources? And uh, I talk a lot in the last chapter about um, some really exciting frontier level questions about, you know, what is it about some natural ecosystems that protect against disease? So, you know, it begins to provide a, a really exciting approach to studying the pathogen reducing services of natural ecosystems and how those can be beneficial for both our biota and humans. Thank you so much for joining us today on Ocean Inverts. We hope you enjoyed learning about sea star wasting disease and other marine diseases. Please check out our other videos for more marine inverts content.